All right, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the hyper terminal and we're going to talk about recovering and checking the a Stratix 5700 or a 5400 or even a Stratix 8000 using either hyper terminal or putty. Now, in this case, we're going to use hyper terminal and I'm going to show you how to do that and how to set that up in your computer so you're actually successful. Now, first and foremost, what I'm going to do is actually open hyper terminal and I'm gonna actually go and I have it installed already. Now I will tell you that and click no when you when you actually go to hyper terminal uh, to use as default, click no. Now in this section, you're, you're basically just gonna name it. You're gonna name it right here. So we'll call this Stratix uh, 5700 and then we'll call this uh, demo. So um, now in this section right here, and I, I wanna tell you too, uh, hyper terminal if you go to look for it on the internet it will actually be you know anywhere from 24 to like 60 dollars it depends upon where you're looking at it now because it used to be free uh, i actually have the the old files and i have the files that were free and i have everything so if you are a member of this channel you will go into the you can just easily go into the, the community section and you can get those files downloaded for free again as being a member of this channel so uh, I have you know no worries on that and I'm also going to give you the, the actual boot code um, because again this is uh, about recovering a boot code checking the boot code and seeing why the actual Stratic switch is not booting up properly right so now um, we're gonna go ahead and name this right now in this point you want to actually come in this is the next point it's so you see the name we're connecting to right here right here it says right here and when you install hyper terminal it's going to ask you for a default uh, area code i put 706 that's just where i'm from um, i put no phone number because i'm not talking through telnet i'm not doing anything um, i'm using this actual uh, com3 com3 and you might want to might want to be asking where's the com3 right so i'm actually using a usb to serial adapter it's a belkin da adapter and i'll show you this right so if i use uh, device manager and I come in here to device manager and I come in here to my USB right here. I'm using this Belkin USB uh, serial adapter and I can easily come in here and check this, right? So I can check the port that I'm using. I can check the speed and everything and we're gonna use this. We're gonna make sure this, this is working. But you come into advanced right here and you can change the port if you want to. Now I chose to keep it as port three. That's just what I chose to use. And again, you can choose to use whatever port you want to as long as this port that you're using in Device Manager lines up with this port. And what does that look like? This is an actual uh, USB to serial and it's, it's a console cable, right? So it looks just like that, right? And that's a console cable. So we're gonna click OK. Now we're gonna change our baud rate right here. This is should be 9600. And then we're gonna come in and change our flow control to X on, X off, okay? And we're gonna hit apply and then we're gonna start. Now at this point, you can hit enter. And then if you have connection, well, now I will say this, if you have connection and your switch is good, you're just gonna come up with an, you know, whatever S, whatever S, like in this, my case, it's an, it's a Stratix 5700. So it's an S5700, right? So uh, just keep in mind that that's the way you, you do that. And I'll show you in this right here, this is exactly the steps I did, right? You start hyper terminal, new connection, you name the connection, you come in here, you pick report that you're actually using. They don't describe going to, you know, actually going to device manager like I did. But again, that's the way you find it on your computer. And this is a Windows 10 environment that I'm using it on, even though Hyper Terminal was used on XP and Windows 7. So um, then I changed the baud rate to, again, come back and make sure that that is 9600 and again set to proper settings now they tell you real subtly to hit enter right here right now again so this comes into this starts talking about down here in this next section xp stuff and i'm not going to get into that and how that works um, because again when it comes down to it 
that is just uh, as simple as it is, right? So as far as this goes, um, I want to actually talk about a few other things that this is, this could be a prime reason why, why you do actually have your boot code not working. So again, this tells you right here, a 57 Stratix 5700, but again, it could be a 5700, 5400, or a, a Stratix 8000 that could be not booting. Now, this is the reasons why, and this kind of gives you an indication too, um, even though they don't really highlight the 8000, all of them still work on a Cisco platform, so they all still work the same. So this uses a PuTTY environment, right? So PuTTY, and this is actually showing you, I'm gonna use a hyper terminal environment, right? So I'm gonna come in here and actually show you this, right? Now, when it comes in here, you can do enable, and then you're gonna enter the password to your, now it's not gonna show up, but if, as long as you hit the password and it, it does enter in, then uh, again, the password doesn't show up for protection purposes, as you see on Hyper Terminal, it's more of a console connection, so you actually don't see the password when you're typing it, so don't freak out if you don't see it. Just type your password. If it's rejected, you have the wrong password. If you, again, you can go back and actually reset the default, uh, you know, go through, go through the default process of the actual strategy switch if you have a boot code and reset the password. If you don't, again, it will not prompt you for the password. Okay, so don't worry. I already have this this one reset. I already have this one you know, um, actually working, but this is the same process. It just won't ask you for the actual password. But I'm gonna show you how to check this. I'm gonna come in here and show you how to check this stuff, right? So <clears throat> this, t this actually, this tech note tells you that you check your boot code, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you uh, real quick how to check your boot code. Okay, so you hit show boot. Okay, this shows you the way it booted. Okay, now what they're telling you to look out for is this manual boot right here, right? They're telling you if the manual boot is on, then it's gonna actually tell you it needs to be manually booted every time, right? So that's not gonna continuously boot. So how do you cut that off? Very good question, right? I'm gonna actually um, go down to this section down here, which is the third section, right? Which is the solution three, which is the more prominent one that, that works every time. Now I'm gonna actually come in here and, and show you this, right? So to enter in this, this configuration, it's gonna come in and if you want to, you, well, this is the way you have to do it and it's not if you want to. You're gonna hit, it's basically, you see right now my switch is right here. So I'm gonna just basically type in configuration, configure, right? Terminal, hit enter. It's gonna enter into the config mode. Now it's entered in config mode, right? And now I'm just going to press the next command, which is going to be no boot manual, okay? no boot manual make sure you spell that stuff right no boot manual and as long as that takes it will work right now you can't just exit out of this stuff you actually have to come in and close it out again you hit exit to get out right and then you show boot again okay so you hit exit exit that will exit back out. Then you hit show boot again to verify that the change did take. Um, so again, now I didn't enable it to show you the, the process, but that is exactly what you should be checking um, to, to check. And that's how you act, would actually correct it if that is the problem. Now, if it has lost its boot and it doesn't know the boot, you're gonna be looking for, it's gonna give you an error that says it can't find this. Now that's based upon the flash. The only way to recover that <clears throat> is to actually create a actual boot code or, or a bootable disk, right? So creating a bootable disk is pretty simple. And we come in here to, and I think I have this right here, creating a bootable disk is gonna, I'm gonna skip fast all this cause it's really, really simple. You're just gonna come into your configuration 
you're going to sign into your switch, whatever your switch is, right? And you're going to basically sync in. Now, this is going to have to be a separate switch, right? So keep this in mind. This is going to have to be a separate switch. But what, what I am going to do is for those that are a, a member of this actual uh, channel, you will go to the community tab. You will have a download with the boot code for the Stratex 5700. So you're able to take these files, put them on an SD card, and do the actual CL command, and come in here and do this, right? So I'm gonna actually ex exit out of the CL altogether. So if you were to actually come into your switch and start the process over, right? Then you could actually boot from, from the actual uh, SD card that I'm going to, you know, that I, the files that I'm going to give you, you could all, you, all you have to do is load them on an SD card and then basically, you know, load it from there and that would give you the boot code. Now, this is ex exactly what it's telling you right here is it's telling you to sync a good switch with the act an actual SD card, right? It's going to tell you to actually sync from the actual switch to the SD card and that will verify that, right? This is just giving you a legacy diagram of how to do that, right? This is just giving you a PDF on this exact same thing, right? So the same thing that I just described to you. Now, showing that exact process is slightly different. You know, as far as this goes, you're just basically syncing up your actual, so you're signing into your switch, a good switch, for instance, right? You already have a switch. Um, or say for instance you you don't have a switch and then I'm going to give you the files again that's really simple to get um, but again if you don't if you do have another switch another Stratix which is defaulted all you have to do is put an SD card in there real quick come in here sign into the other switch and then sync it in so all you would literally do <clears throat> is sync in the actual switch so you would you would actually do this function right here. You would actually come in and do the control or the flash to SD sync, right? So you would sync the iOS. Okay, so the iOS is what you're trying to do. Now, again, the configuration is important, but in the instance of what we're trying to do, where we've lost our boot code, we can't boot up the actual Stratix switch itself. We want the iOS. We want the iOS image. The only way to get that, the simplest way to get that is to actually go. It's not the only way, but the simplest way to get that is to actually have another switch and to use the SD card. This is why the SD making an SD card is so important, right? Having a backup, having that good file there. But again, I will have these files in the actual community element um, of this channel, and you can get those files there. Or you can, if you don't, if you're not part of this channel, you can easily look these up. On Cisco, you can start an account with Cisco and, and look these up as far as that goes as well, too. Now, um, but I did want to actually show you that as far as how, you know, how to do that. Okay, so what I've done is I've actually went into my actual uh, VM. So I've, I've jumped over to my VM so that I'm actually off of my, um, you know, was it was actually on my, my desktop showing. So I would actually being able to show you uh, the process of actually how to do this so so what we're going to do actually now is actually go into this and show you the details of this right now i'm still i've, I've actually signed out let's actually exit this um and so we're exiting hyper terminal we're going to go into our vm and like i said we've, we're signing in so we're basically just going to go admin and then add our password and then log in so we're gonna log in and then we're gonna to go to, now this is actually gonna to go to the actual web page, all right? Now again, um, this is, I've already had this set, so I'm basically showing you a, a, a healthy one, right? So I'm gonna show you how to actually sync this with your actual um, SD card, right? So a lot of people, you know, it, it's very, not very intuitive to see, hey, this is the correct thing to do, right? So. Uh, as you see, um, this is my what I've signed into 192.168.11, um, and uh, when you have something like this, this is just at, at having your ActiveX working. So uh, let's actually get the ActiveX working and allow the ActiveX to work. 
actually let's come in here let's go into uh, certificate uh, let's actually get the ActiveX working and that's just a matter of blocked all good everything should be good um, see I think it's in settings but um, anyway so let's just see if we can get to the page so you want to go to the sync page and this may come up where it, it's ActiveX uh, struck in two so we'll see uh, but actually it's good so we don't have any ActiveX issues but what you want to do is you, you're wanting to sync your actual iOS right so you want to come over here to your your flash to your SD card, right? So you want to have a at least a one gig uh, SD card, something like that, that would hold a good amount of information, right? So now you can. Here's the thing: you can go from your SD card to your flash, right? So I want to show you something. So this is this is the critical part to all this stuff, right? So if you're going, I want to break this really really simple as far as you know having an understanding of what to do so if if you are uh, you know trying if you're creating a boot uh, file then what you're gonna do is you're going to synchronize you're gonna flash to SD sync Okay, so this is what you're gonna do. Let's actually get that up there just like that. To kind of show you that. Now, if you are actually, now if you're on the counter side of the actual bad switch, later after you get it working off the, cause you're gonna do it off the command line first, and then you're gonna come back and you're gonna get it working. Well, so what you wanna do is, is not have it boot off the actual SD card every time. You wanna actually sync it from the SD to the flash. So at that point, so if you're if you're loading from SD to switch, then you're going to actually SD to flash sync. <clears throat> and and what this is doing right and and this makes perfect sense right so what we're going to do real quick is I already have these synced right I already have these done but I'm just going to click this box right here and this could take up to five minutes and what you do is you sync your 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 onboard iOS to your actual SD card right and then we'll come back on the counter side of the other other switch right you would come back on the counter side to the other switch and you would actually do the reverse right so you would plug the SD card in to the slot right plug it into the slot and I'll actually show you the slot while this is doing this right we'll actually pull this up you can actually see where the SD card is it has like a little flip hinge right so that's exactly what you would you would put that SD card in there you would come back into your command line. So we'll get out of our, come back into your hyper terminal, which I, we showed you how to do earlier. And then you would open that up and then it would automatically boot from the, from the actual hyper terminal, right? So, and there's a, there is an actual tech note that shows you, you know, how to actually go through that. And let me see if I can't find that tech note. And actually, what I uh, what I did find is syncing your your iOS from your Stratix. Uh, when you get you can get an error, but here's the thing behind this is the the way it works. And I'll actually go through and talk about this. If you have a boot code, right? If you have a valid boot code, say for instance, you backed it up just like we showed you to do right here. Just it is still in progress. Progress, right? If you backed it up and you've came in and then you've loaded you've actually put that SD card that you backed up into the switch that has failed right then what you're going to do is you're going to go into your command prompt of your you're going to start your hyper terminal you're going to go into your command prompt you're going to hit enter and then you're going to hit boot okay you're going to hit the word boot and 
this actually shows you, I believe this would be off of this one. I believe it's this one right here. Actually, I have it. Um, sorry. Let's see. Not booting. So you want to come in here and you would hit the word boot, right? This shows you right here. Now, when you hit the word boot, what it's going to do is it's going to actually automatically boot from that actual SD card that you just made. That's when you're going to get the full interpretation and full ability to actually go in and sign in the default address because it's going to be defaulted at that point. The default address to use the setup, all right, to use the, the natural um, setup that, that Rockwell has for your actual switch, right? The express setup, right? So all you have to do at that point is express setup and you're actually good. But then you still need to come into your switch and you still need to sync from your SD card to your, your onboard flash. Okay. So what that's going to do is it's going to actually tell it, okay, I'm going to actually boot up and I'm going to actually start booting up from my actual memory of the switch instead of the actual SD card. But it can work both ways. It doesn't, you know, it's not going to hurt anything if it works off of an actual uh, SD card. The problem with that is if somebody ever takes the SD card, then you won't have a bootable switch, right? If somebody cycles the power on the switch, it won't be actually be bootable. Now, and you can actually, here's the thing too that I want you to note. You cannot sign into if, say for instance, your switch booted up from the actual SD card, you are not allowed to, you, you won't be able to sign into the web page. It will try to pull up, but it will not pull up unless you actually have the bootable um, ability or the, the bootable process inside of the switch, right? Meaning if, you, if you're booting up from the, the SD card, it has to have the SD card. If you're booting up from the switch internally, then it doesn't need the SD card. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm trying to, to show you several different processes and several different ways, but this is something that happens quite a bit. And again, this does take up to five minutes, so I want to make sure that you get the full understanding of how this works. But again, if it's not booting completely, then you come in here and you check these functions that we talked about how to check, right? We showed you how to do that. So you come in here, and I can actually go right back in here and hit enter, sign into my switch, enable, right? Enter my password, okay? And then I check show boot right and you can see this time it actually booted from the actual SD card right so it's, it's booting from the flash as are the SD flash right so it's actually it's actually showing me that right but my, my uh, manual boot is off right so that's a good sign now if I want to exit I can exit and that's what you want to do you want to exit out of your command lines when you're doing that so again it's really, really, really simple on how to set up your hyper terminal. Again, device manager is your friend. That's where you're going to find how to set it up. So if you want to go run through that real quick again, if I actually came in here and did a new connection, I want to disconnect this one now. I want to not save it. I want to say new test. We're just going to call this new test. We're going to make sure that our connection point right here and our device manager is going to be, now this is a USB to, again, a USB to serial, and the serial is converting to that actual console cable. So um, all we're doing is using the same setup. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna make sure we're nine, um, 9600. We're gonna change to X on, X off, right here. We're gonna apply, come in here, hit enter. We're in our switch right now, we enable, come in here, Put our password in. We come in here, and now we can do show boot, and we're back active. Now again, um, just showing. I'm just wanted to show you that real quick again, because uh, when it comes down to it, you know that's the process. And those are the the, the connection and the conductivity and the, the way things are communicated. Um, generally, are the hold up you know parts, all right? Because if you're using Putty, it's a lot. Like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of Putty, so I'm going to give you the actual hyper terminal files that uh, you can actually use 
um, that, would, uh, that will be inside of the actual community area. But let's actually see if we're synced now. We're actually not synced. So let's actually uh, let's wait till we're actually done syncing. And while this is syncing, um, I want to actually bring up something too. So you, if you notice, um, and this is maybe somewhat confusing that I didn't talk about, is the hyper terminal that I'm using is using a USB to serial, right? And that is a USB to serial in this very front port, which is going to be the console cable right here, right? Now, the conductivity part that I'm doing here with this 192.168.1.1 is done through port 1, okay? So that's actually done through Ethernet. That's done right there. Now, so please don't, don't um, actually, and this actually just finished the sync process right here, but please don't misunderstand that you are communicating to your actual console or you're communicating to your web page through your console cable you can actually do this whole backup process through your if you do know the cl commands you can do the whole process through your actual console cable but in this case i'm showing you a more ot it based type system right so ot being the operating technology and the IT being the information technology side of the information. So, because there's an IT OT convergence that has happened with Rockwell and automation um, over the past few years. So, it's better for us to stay in the loop and stay understand how to do things so that we're, we're you know, we can actually succeed at what we're doing and, and not hit these roadblocks, right? So, so, it's one thing to understand how things are done and then come back to your dashboard and then uh, we're actually good so now again um this the dashboard again is just it takes a, sometimes a little bit to load and that, that could be that activex thing too that i need to to uh fix is just enabling that but uh we come to smart ports to see if the smart ports pull up simple fact of uh it, it just could be the simple fact of um the i need to uh enable the actual, um, yeah, they're actually coming up. It's co it's coming up now. It just took it a while to actually populate. So I actually have uh, the port while you know two, three, four, and five and six as automation devices. And again, I have this as automatic sync, so you can actually automatically sync this stuff. You can load and save. Um, one thing I did do, and this is how I got the files, is I wanted to actually show you that as well. So you can actually save and load. Uh, now, when this comes down to it, again, this does take a little bit uh, to actually do. So um, I downloaded these two these files, right? So I'm, that's the configuration and that. That's where you can get your configuration and uh, all your files that you, you, you need. Now, where did I get the files that I'm going to give you for your boot? I actually got them from the SD card um, again, and they will actually look like this. They will actually look uh, populated, I believe, right here. So they will actually look just like this. So I do have those, and I do have those backed up. And again, you can see the files. So um, what I wanted to do is actually show you a couple different ways to go about getting. This is your, just your text file, and this is just your. Um, this is the communication files that you need to actually load. If you are ever to load the files in, we'll have more videos on this stuff as far as that goes. But in this video, again, we kind of covered quite a bit of stuff. But um, when it comes down to it, I wanted to make sure that it was a very detailed video that kind of gave you exactly what you wanted to see as far as like recovering, um, being able to come in and use uh, different stuff as far as that goes. Um, you know, let's populate that. Uh, pull that screen up again as far as going back up and, and doing the boot code finding the boot code finding the show uh, boot just just make sure you know running hyper terminal you know setting that up um, coming back and, and just doing things the proper way where to get the stuff um, I do know that some of these links are actually broken so um, you know Rockwell does do their very best on try to keep some of these tech notes up to date but some of them are actually broken so um, you know one of them came right here 
one of them I had to search for on the internet and uh, this was just bootloader stuff that you can actually do commands and stuff of that nature but again coming back and using CLI and, and using the proper ways to do things is just going to help you succeed in how to you know further your your SIP communications with your drives with your switches whatever you're doing and let you understand the way the Ethernet protocol is actually employed so the more you can get in depth with this stuff the better you are and again we're all about passing information we're all about helping so hopefully you got a lot out of this value and we'll see you guys on the next one